previously on From Bournemouth to Bulgaria. I wonder how the spots. This is what we've done so far. We did it! <laughs> Happy? Now that's what it looks like from the top. But that's full. Too much for me. Oh, I, can't. <laughs> I can. <laughs> you look like you're in a concentration camp. <laughs> Your first thoughts of the new chickens. So you can see all I'm doing is I'm just laying a bit of a, a cement just down the side here. Hi, I'm Jordan. I'm Lewis. sticks and regroup from the hustle and bustle of the UK to a more simplistic life in Bulgaria. Watch as we learn, grow, fail, succeed and everything in between. From Bournemouth to Bulgaria. So after a little break in England, I say little as much, um, after a month in England, it's time to get back to work and pick up where we left off. Um, so the windows and the window frames on the annex window, which will be mine and Lou's, it's our own rooms basically. He's going to do stuff in his and I'll do mine, like art and sewing and spray painting. And it's going to be good. So yeah, we need to finish them. While I was away, Lewis's friend Greg did come and give us a hand, well, them a hand and they ripped down all the ceilings in here and they did do one one window i think um so yeah thank you for that greg it looks great it's really spurred me on to get going so yeah again just gonna be me scraping windows and painting them but once this is done the glass can go in they can be fitted and this room since they fixed the roof will now be watertight which is great because that means I can start painting my room and doing the floor. So yeah, let's get started. So I've done all of this bit already, um, but then I remember that I've got a video, so I would get mad at me. Lou begrudgingly helped me pick out all the nails so I could get the glass out. It's just not good at it, you know? It's not good at DIY. Should I try it? Should I give it a go? Two hours later. Yes! Screw you, Lou. Don't you choose. Okay, back to scraping. Join us on a trip down memory lane as we give away a Patreon video for free and all you have to do is simply subscribe to our newsletter where we will keep you updated with all the new videos, with any house updates, with any new videos that come out on YouTube or Patreon and just generally keeping you in the loop. So for the first time ever, I'm going to give Canon or Jarin a go. We're going to try and preserve some potatoes today and maybe a few uh, chilies that I've been growing. And uh, yeah, we're going to stick them in, in the jars that came with the house when we came here. They're really good condition. They're lovely little, like, uh, I, I don't know if they're called masonry jars or something. They're not, I don't think they're masonry jars because that's the ones with the swing top lids, isn't it? Um, they're jars, but they're lovely jars. And therefore, they're like single-use jars. 
So I am currently just washing and sterilizing, cleaning some jars up, and I will be boiling some potatoes in a massive saucepan that actually came with the property as well, which we've cleaned up. You would have seen me standing on it when I was building the septic tank when we first come here, when we just didn't have when we just didn't have any equipment at all. And uh, yeah, I knew that would have made Jordan mad, but it's okay. See, it's fine. It doesn't matter. It's all good. So what I'll do is I'll I'll get going and uh, and I'll talk you through some of the stuff that I'm doing. Yeah. So I've peeled a load of potatoes, I've washed up these jars, and this is the big pot that we're using. So inside the pot we've got chopped and peeled potatoes. We're literally gonna leave that for about three, three to five minutes, no more than that. And then I don't know if I can use the boiling water from the pota potatoes to put into the jar with the potatoes. I'm gonna have a little look at that because I'm not too sure. But yeah, what will happen next is we'll put them into the jars with some white vinegar and a little bit of seasoning and some salt. And then we'll put the lids on and then we will put the jars in the boiling water after capping and sealing them off with this, with this capping device, which is for single use uh, jars. I asked people on TikTok what, what I needed to do and I had a lot of help from people on there and they were really, really, really helpful. And then yeah, we'll put them in to the water I believe for about 20 minutes, 20 to 40 minutes. So I'm gonna have a little look because I'm not entirely sure on that either. Really should have done my research before I started doing this. But I'm also going to, depending on how many jars I have left after the potatoes, I'm gonna pickle and preserve some chili peppers too. So yeah, I'm gonna keep at it. So at the minute, struggling to get a roll rolling boil because it's not on a gas cooker. So I've actually come up with an alternative solution. Potatoes are in there. I think it's going to get to a rolling boil in a second. But I actually thought for jarring, using this would be better, which is my brew pot. But actually, it's kind of already set up to do it. So I can temperature control it really well. I know it comes to a rolling boil. I know I can get it up to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit for the jarring process. I've got this as well. And this was something that we custom I custom made in, in England and it will hold the jars off of the bottom of the of the the heating element as well so i think using my brew pot to do the the jarring process is actually going to be a better solution To every single person that donates to our channel through super thanks or paypal we just want to take this opportunity to bring you guys up and just say thank you for your kindness every little bit that goes towards our channel goes an incredibly long way you guys are the absolute best all right so my plan in here is to come off of the shower room floor. So for example, what I mean by that, I'm gonna show you because I can't explain it very well. So you see these tiles on the edge here, these are half cuts. And the reason they're half cuts is that the floor slopes straight down towards the drain. So obviously I had to half cut it so that it came flush with this edge because these floors, this floor and that floor, one sits nice and level and the other one sits at a slope. So I had to cut it there because naturally that's where a cut would have took place. And I'm gonna continue that cut and make a full tile cut here. And one, one of the biggest problems I'm gonna have is that this floor here is not level. It slopes, it's higher that end, lower this end. And my guess is I want to start at the low point. Is that right? Because I want to work my way back. Because if I'm if I start too high, then it's not gonna line up very nicely, is it, with this with these two tiles if I start too high. So I think it's probably gonna be best to start from these tiles here and then work my way back that way. Which I can't see why it would be a problem. I think I'm gonna get all my cuts done first 
get all my cuts done and then we'll go from there. But cuts first, we'll lay the floor out and then we'll go from there. I get lost in the words I say. I don't push pause, no, I push play. I won't stop till I make a change. I withdraw on the things I make. I turn flaws into flawless traits. I build tall, never cap in space. I won't stop till I hear him say. Okay, so I made the same mistake I did last time where I've made enough grout to do the entire property when I didn't need to do that much. And I did this last time and I made this mistake last time and I made it again. Don't need this much grout. It's far too much. I'm never going to use it all. Muppet. Muppet. What a waste. I really like grouting. Just kind of spread it where you want it, you know? I like this bit because it's kind of like the final piece to the puzzle of the tiling. And it just maybe ties everything up and makes it not look as bad. Because there are some areas on here that I'm not happy with because I'm a perfectionist and like just the little things like the crosses and the lines not being quite perfect and that really frustrates me but that comes down to being experienced and getting things right and yeah i'm not quite i'm not quite at the experienced level yet i'm being a muppet as well because i should be working from there and then backwards and for some reason i'm losing my concentration when you talk to everyone else I have just finished grouting. That is another job ticked off the list. I mean, there's still a little bit to go, as always. A bit of silicon, sort the door out. But, tiling done. Happy about that. Shall I show you? I mean, it doesn't look much different to when the pegs were in it, but it looks a bit better, so. There it is. There it is. One more job done. Not my proudest work, it's okay. I'm not sure if I dealt with this section correctly, but hey ho. It works, it's functional, it feels good. Uh, obviously the shower's still a little bit dirty, that needs cleaning because I've been working and standing in there. But overall, that's a fully tiled floor and uh, that's gonna be much nicer now when you get into the shower from this room. Because we were standing on like a muddy, dirty floor, but now we can walk in, nice tiled floor, we'll get some hooks on the wall. Still put a toilet back over there. We'll have some uh, corner shelving in here. We're gonna repaint as well. So yeah, it's gonna look lovely. If you like watching our channel, please like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've caved and bought paint stripper because these windows are taking too long and I've never used paint stripper, never used it. So I thought for six lab, I'm going to give it a go. So I don't know how to use it because it's all in Bulgarian. I'm guessing you just paint it on. Um, so yeah, I'm going to see how that works. Did you step on it? Just a weird one. It's only just been glued down, so maybe don't. Yeah, that's fine. I love how you were like, it's a nice piece of wood, it's got holes in. <laughs> Isn't that like termites? Mm, yeah, it used to be. It's not now. No, but you like that termite effect. I do like the termite effect. Yeah, I think it looks aged. Yeah, and then we're going to put like shelves back there. Tell everyone your vision with this room now that we've done all the tiling. This one. What have you got left to do in here? I want to paint these because they're ugly as hell. In a funky colour, you know? Blue. And then put a toilet in. Ooh. Shelves. One day, Lou will put up this. What is it? Side. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if we had like a piece of wood across here? It would actually. Wouldn't that be nice? And like a little shelf. 
and this has all got to be repainted. Probably get quite wet though, wouldn't it, a lot? Yeah, but people do it there, I've seen on Pinterest. Okay. And then I'm just ready for you really to uh, pop up that stud wall. <laughs> 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 Whenever you're ready. Yeah. Just let me know, yeah? Will do. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, there's no point putting the stud wall up until we've got all the tiles as well that are going over the stud wall because otherwise the stud wall is just there getting wet. Yeah, I'm just, so, I don't think you'll ever do it. I will do it. I don't think you will, mate. I will. You wait. Yeah. We'll pull this clip back up one day and you'll see. Do you remember when Jordan said I wasn't going to do the stud wall? Well, here I am, 70 years old. <laughs> <laughs> What, that up there? Yeah. It's not even like you can use it as a shelf or anything. Nah, well, I can. can't reach. Yeah, you can't. You're, you're a midget. Yeah. Vertically challenged. <laughs> so, I don't know. Oh, we can get those, like, you know those box glass tiles? I don't know. They're like a box. <gasps> oh, I do. Them. We could, like, put them in. Oh, that's a good idea. That's cute, isn't it? You'd probably have to order them from somewhere special. They were like so in at one point, weren't mm. they? But the 90s stuff's coming back. Oh, it is coming back. We're coming back, baby. Mm -hmm. 90s baby. Um, yeah. Take this pen oh, and put it in the house. You put it in the house. You put it in the house. We're seven years old, we still, we still put the toilet roll on the floor. <coughs> I put it on the side, on the windowsill. Why are you so mad? <laughs> because it's been sat there for months. If this is your first time here, you may not know about our Patreon members platform. This can be anything from deleted scenes to sneak peeks of future YouTube footage. We also have our Patreon members Q&A section where we directly reply to people in video footage and post it on our YouTube, as well as a shed load of other video collections. Not only this, but you guys get early access to our YouTube videos three days prior to airing. This member's platform makes a huge difference to our lives here. And to access all of these cool features, you do have to subscribe on a paid membership, but don't forget that you can also join for free. So please come on over and join us anyway, whether you decide to join as a paid member or a free member. And now we just want to take this moment to say thank you to the members who are supporting us on this platform. Keep supporting us guys and we'll keep bringing you out great content. Whether you support us on Patreon, YouTube, or any of our social media platforms, you guys all make it really worth continuing our venture and sharing our journey with you. Some playset that she's got from, uh, I don't know where we got this from actually. Where did we get I think we got it from Lidl's, maybe. Anyway, this was for her birthday and uh, I'm just putting it together. It's basically somewhere where she can chuck a load of mud, load of sand and turn the water on because a hose pipe connects to it and it's like a, it trickles down over three tiers. And it's pretty hot today, darling, isn't it? Is it hot? So Martin has asked us on our Patreon, how are you getting on with the language and how do you find the language barrier? Now me personally, I can probably at this stage speak the best out of everyone. Uh, just through having to interact with so many people all the time and forever looking at Google Translate. Leo speaks well as well. He knows really good sentences and he goes to lessons three times a week. So additional lessons on top of school three times a week. Faye knows small words and she's only just starting. And Jordan's pretty good at knowing a lot of the cool words as well. So I'll give you a small short breakdown of what I know off the spot. And it's not everything I know, but it will give you an understanding of how much I do know to some extent. Which means I can speak a little Bulgarian. Kaksi, which is how are you doing? Zdrasti, or zdravei, or zdraveti, which is hello. Good, goodbye here is ch or dovizdene. Uh, thank you is blogodaria, or mercy, they also say a lot. Kakvo, tova, which is what is this? Or here in the village, a lot of people shorten it down. Uh, Kowetva. So they just get rid of the whole cat they get rid of kakvo and they and they say just ko so kowetva or kopravish which is what are you doing kaksakazvash which is what is your name or kaksakazva is uh i think i believe kaksakazva is like what is her name or you could say tia kaksakazva um which is uh what is her name because tia is the she 
and I could go on and on and on, you know. Um, we could be here for a while doing this, so I won't go too crazy. But I, I know enough to to be able to kind of understand what Bulgarian people are saying to some extent and, and hold some form of conversation. Not quite bilingual, you know. I don't think we're we're anywhere near where where I would like to be. But we know enough, you know. We know enough, and I think that's important. And with every year that goes by, with with more time communicating with people around us and making the effort to communicate in this language, it's no problem. And I'm sure with Faye starting kindergarten now, she's going to be absolutely fluent with no problems whatsoever. So it's, it's, it's not a problem. Like, I think if you choose to go to another country, you should make the effort to learn their language and not expect them to just speak English to you because reality is in the village there are not a lot of people here that speak English so don't expect it but you know if you go to the cities then there are a lot more people speak English but I think people around you they respect you more for trying to speak their language you'll, you'll create a better life for yourself within the community by learning to speak their language I couldn't dream of, of staying here for like 10 years and not knowing how to speak their language it would just frustrate the hell out of me so I'm really glad that we do make the effort and we do try and, uh, and I plan to be fluent within the next couple of years. I really hope that I'm fluent within the next two years. What? I'm sweating like a pig. Why? Oh, I it. <laughs> so today, we have decided that we're going to gut the bedroom and start fixing the horrendous floor in here, along with pulling down some of this render because we're going to have an exposed brick wall here. We... Originally, we we're going to patch it up, but Jordan's got her heart set on this exposed brick feature that she really, really wants. Always wanted one, though. Always wanted one. So that's what's happening. So the plan that now we, what we, the plan is is to put some self-leveling compound on the floor and get this floor looking nice. We were going to plan to tile it originally, but the car broke down and that kind of went sideways, and it cost us a lot of money, so we couldn't really do it. But we can put self-leveling compound on here, which was something my brother recommended to me because I actually didn't even know about it. So thank you for that. We So the plan is get everything out of here. I just sorted my wardrobe as well. I know you did. I know you did. I just sorted it and now you... We're just going to move the wardrobe out into the hallway, out into the porch anyway. And then you can put it all back in. We just need to empty it to make it lighter. Wait. Flynn, where will you move out of the way? Look at him. He's always in the way. I don't care. He's just trying to be a good dog. He's not a good dog. He wants to get in the way. I mean, you notice, whenever you're trying to move things, that's when dogs become the most active at your feet. Now, this is the state of the floor that we've been dealing with. You can see how many bits are all over it. We've been living with this. And I can assure you, getting into bed, on a floor like this, it doesn't matter how much you hoover it. This is it. what your mattress feels like. That's that's literally what it feels like you're sleeping on. Uh, because it's just impossible to keep it off your feet. It's been so difficult. This is disgusting. It'll all be over soon. I feel like I'm on that show. Tonight, Matthew. <laughs> I'm going to be. <laughs> So we've just noticed that in here there's going to be a bit more prep work involved on the floor than I would have liked or that, than I would have hoped. Typically, once we get all of the stuff out, like the wardrobe in a minute, we'll be able to really fully assess how much prep work is going to be needed. But the, what the problem is, is that we believe the floor was built. They fill it with mud and then they just slab a load of concrete on top. And then that sets and then that's your floor. I think, I'm not 100% sure if that's how they do a floor, but that's kind of how it feels because underneath this floor, we're on the first floor, I believe that it is filled with dirt and rocks because I can see holes in the floor in this room. And I believe that it's filled with dirt and rock and the dirt and the rock has finally settled and sunk away from the floor. And now there's a hollow gap underneath the floor Realistically, what we probably need to do, if I'm honest with you, is probably tear the whole floor up and then pump a load of concrete in it and then start again. But if I, I'm not, I'm just not going to do. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I think what we can do 
is find the weakest areas of the room. And then I think we can fill that with concrete and cement and allow that to set on top of what's there, creating a better foundation for, for the compound that we're going to put on the floor. I'll show you what I mean by what, what the problem is. This is a prime example. Now, it wasn't cracked like this earlier, but once I started stepping on it, noticing that it was weak, you can see here in this area just how bad it is. And I need to do something about that because that is no good. That is no good. I can see that it probably comes to about this area here. <sighs> That's probably where it's going to break off. So I'm going to break it off there on that long, along that crack line. And then we're just going to fill it with concrete and just make it a bit more secure than it is because that's no good. I can't lay on top of that. That's rubbish. But for the majority of the rest of the room, you know, it's pretty good. So it's only in some areas that it's really bad. It really isn't everywhere. So I think the quickest and simplest solution is to find the worst parts, fill them with cement. And then I think we can do more to the floor and we can lay our compound on top once we've cleaned. So on purpose, I've made a reasonably running mix. And uh, the reason being is so that it gets under areas that are kind of weak and hollowed out. That's my plan anyway. So we're just going to give it a pour in. I can't find my trail, annoyingly. So, well, this is the small trail. Can't find the big trail. But definitely glad I'm not risking it, you know? And I'm just getting this in. I think it's, I think it's necessary, for sure. I'm just gonna tuck it into the edges, make sure it goes underneath, and push it in there. Because what I don't want to do is lay the floor, lay the new compound, and then it cracks and breaks, because the floor underneath it was weak. But, Hopefully not, it's going to be a problem. I actually think that one bucket fall might be enough. But try to remember, it doesn't have to be perfect because we've still got some compound going over this. Just as level as I can get it, really. I do need to find my trowel, my proper trowel, my big one. This is probably the best bit of floor in the room right now. Okay, so we've patched up this area and we've patched up over there and that really was all the only areas that needed patching up. The rest of the floor is pretty darn good. No problems, no problems at all. Uh, the rest will just be fine with the compound. What we're going to do now is we're going to focus on exposing this wall. So the plan is to get the SDS drill and start chiseling away at this and work our way along to this side. And then I'm going to run an angle grinder in this corner and cut it flush and then chisel it off so it doesn't break away too much of this wall which we're keeping. Let's get to it. Let's get on with it. Lots to do. It's about to get dusty. So I've started off with the SDS. But I'm actually finding that a lump hammer is better for making sure that you don't damage the brick too much. So if I use the SDS, I find that I put too many markings in the bricks. And if I use a lump hammer, I don't put any markings in the bricks. So I think I'm just gonna lump hammer it from now on. Come on, get at it. Is it meant to be this? Which hand is that You're right, babe. Doesn't matter, I use both. So does it matter which hand's on top? Do whatever you feel comfortable with. I think it's this way, but let me try it. Oh no, it's definitely this way. <laughs> that was a low blow, mate. <laughs> that was a low blow. Where's the your for the record? What? For the record. Let's get going. <laughs> oh, look at me. I'm straight to the middle. Boom. Now hit, hit the middle. Ooh. I'm mint. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm 
Yeah, it's nice. I actually do like it. It would look nice once we're finished with it. Yeah, never had like an exposed brick wall. No, you do. Mine's made of frames, I don't know why. It's hot. <coughs> <coughs> what do you think? I think it looks great. It looks good, doesn't it? That looks amazing. I think that actually looks really cool. I can imagine this. So for the people that don't actually know, this is eventually going to be the lounge. It is temporarily our bedroom, but eventually it will be the lounge. And that is very loungy, isn't it? Yeah. Think about like that, exposed, yeah? yeah. Not exposed. Exposed, it's going to be a fireplace. We're going to take that, Lou's going to take that chunk out. Gone. And then all inside there, nice exposed brick for our nice little fireplace in. Beautiful. And then mural, mural, mural. Mural? Yeah, like painted for my ducks. You yeah. know? Yeah, Storks. Yeah, 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 the Storks. But yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. I think it looks I great. Think kind of, I love the way that the window looks in it. Oh yeah, I didn't even look at that. Really brings character to the windows, I think. Those, char those windows are full of character anyway, but yeah, I know what you mean. I think I quite like the rough and ready. What, edges? Yeah. You don't want it grinded square? I don't. I don't think so. Oh. I think that looks nice. Leave it. Yeah. Less work. Right. That plug's got to go, isn't it? Uh, well, no, not necessarily. You can screw it to the bricks. I know, but it just looks ugly. It doesn't look great. No, it's got to go. I don't want it, I don't want it on my exposed wall. That's an eyesore. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll figure that out later. Because it's not like the TV or anything is going to go over there, is it? No. So, you're going to have like a big sofa here. Yeah, we'll do a video of planning when I'm. Alright, but yeah, I think that looks good, man. I'm quite happy with that. Right, now, stop working. What? Hang up your goggles. No. Yes. No. This is what happens, guys, right? I get working and Jordan can't help but oh, stop. Oh, your phone yeah. died. Did it? <laughs> no one gets to see your pansy rant. Come on. <laughs> Next time on From Bournemouth to Bulgaria. We've got the brick wall finished. The exposed brick wall is, is there's still a little bit more to go, but like we can lay the floor now.